Haitians, in their wisdom, instituted certain traditional rites of passage for young pubescent girls when they attained the appropriate age. Looked at with the benefit of hindsight in today's commonness of sexually transmitted diseases and teenage promiscuity, and also the excessive indulgence in premarital sex by boys and girls, the idea of the girls undergoing those puberty rites could be seen as a worthy countermeasure against precociousness, promiscuity, and premarital sexual experimentations. Of course, in the attempt to discourage tradition in favor of Christian or Western values, many families these days tend to frown upon these rites of passage as being paganistic because the churches say so, but the churches are wrong. Today, the influence of the so-called charismatic Pentecostal or apostolic church and their anti-cultural edicts have discouraged many adherents from subjecting the adolescent girls for undergoing these rites. As a matter of fact, in those days, the prospect of severe sanctions imposed on a girl being discovered to have breached societal norms by engaging in premarital sex kept many steady and straight. The repercussions for such a breach were stringent and may include even banishment from the town or village. In that connection, every girl who successfully undergo these puberty rites of passage is paraded through town or the community, dressed in the most expensive stone beads, gold trinkets, rich kente clothing, sneakingly advertising her that her virginity knot has not been broken, and also that she's ready and available for marriage. Being a very expensive ritual to go through, in some cases, many parents of pubescent girls often combine resources to perform one communal event for the eligible girls. When the girl sees her first menstruation, she is metaphorically said to have gone behind the house, as we say in the guard tongue, or she's broken the pathway, literally meaning the girl has crossed the physical threshold between childhood and adolescence. These are more polished expressions than the colloquial ni, meaning she has done the women's usual thing. A mother learning of her daughter's crossing that threshold would immediately prepare the Gadangbe congratulatory meal of oto, which is hard-boiled eggs on mashed cooked yam tinted with palm oil. The girl is from then on respectfully spoken of as having attained womanhood as we say in our guard tongue. The young adolescent girl is confined indoors for between one to two weeks, during which experienced old ladies give her hour-by-hour -hour lessons and lectures on self-care, personal hygiene, body maintenance, housewifery, child care, relations between wife and husband, social norms, domestic economics, and generally those aspects of young girl's life, which no formal classroom education can impact. The meals for the girl confined include the serving of a whole hard-boiled eggs and mashed yam or top. The egg is the African cultural symbol of fertility. Before her outdooring, the girl is accompanied to have a ritual bath in the sea or a river. What most people, especially those of the Christian denominations, so ignorantly object to is the ritual bath with concoctions of sacred herbs and leaves, the tying of joints with raffia, and spotting of the forehead, the chest, the breast, the back of the hand and feet with gunpowder, charcoal powder, and white clay powder. Let us take a brief look at these traditional items used in the ritual. <laughs> 